I'm Cassie Green with a and &E Magazine, here today with Liz Haas from Raisist. Liz, how are you doing today? Hi, Cassie, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks for asking. Wanted to talk to you today a little bit about sandblasting some substrates other than glass. So could you tell me what are the other substrates that work well with sandblasting? Other than glass and crystal, you have many substrates that you can sandblast. Actually, um, your metals, you have your wood, uh, your, your stone, your natural stones such as granite, tile, river rock, corian. There are so many different items that you can sandblast in addition to glass and crystal. I would like to actually have you expand on the metal portion. Can you describe the differences between sandblasting glass and metal? Sure. Uh, when you sandblast glass, you can, you can achieve a surface, a surface edge to a deep edge. So you have your choice. The sand carver is actually in control of the depth of glass. When you blast metal, you're just going to do a surface etch. Really, all you're doing is you're removing the polish from that metal, and that will create your etched area. So talking about the different depths of sand blasting those substrates, will you get an entirely different image in metal versus glass? With, with glass, you're going to get depth. And with metal, you're just removing that polish. So it kind of looks almost like a frosted look. There's not high contrast when you're blasting metal. Now you can leave that stencil on the metal, sandblast it, and apply paint. I want to return to the, the original um, statement you made about sandblasting wood. Can you talk to me about what are the differences with sandblasting wood then versus glass? Sure, when you're sandblasting wood, there are different types of wood. There, there are some woods that's hard, some are soft. So some will blast fairly quickly where others are going to take a little bit more time to sandblast. When you are sandblasting wood, you want to make sure that you apply additional adhesive to your photo mass. That's going to create a tighter or greater bond when adhering that mass to that wood surface. You blast the wood. Now you can leave that mask on the wood and add paint. So when, when you're adding paint to a wood surface, you're providing that contrast to that edged area. In general, what are some of the considerations to keep in mind when blasting various substrates? Your artwork will always determine what photoresist that you're going you're to put that um, artwork image on. So there's different types of photoresist, different thicknesses. So if you have a detailed image, you're going to use a thinner photoresist, such as like a 3 mil. If you have a bolder image and you want to carve that deeper, you can put that on a thicker um, photoresist, such as like a 5 mil or even a 6 mil. So when you're looking at your different substrates, let's say you have a stone with a bolder image, you can put that on a thicker material and then you can etch that deeper. What are some issues that sand carvers may come across when they are working with a material other than glass? Sure, um, let's talk about like a porous surface, your bricks. Um, that surface, it's very difficult to kind of adhere a mass to that surface. So some tricks that we have is, again, you're going to apply additional adhesive to the back of that photo mask. And the adhesive that I like to use is like a water-based, glassable adhesive to the back of that photo mask. But in addition to that, I like to heat up my surface with like a mini plumber's torch. You're just going to heat that surface up until it's hot to the touch and then apply that mask. So now you have a great bond. That's something to keep in mind when you're blasting like unpolished surfaces or like a porous surface. Now in your opinion, what is the most important thing to remember when sandblasting a substrate other than glass? Sure, is you want to take your artwork into consideration here. You're, if you have a detailed image, you're going to blast that like a surface etch. You can put that on a thinner material. Again, we're going to go with the bolder artwork, you can put that on a thicker material. So those are things to kind of keep in consideration is look at your artwork. Your artwork will determine the mill thickness of your photoresist and therefore the depth of your, of your image. So if you have a very detailed image, you're not going to carve that deep. It's going to be more of a surface edge and that's going to give it the best look for that artwork. Any tools or additional equipment that sand carvers will need if they're working with say wood or stone? Sure. Um, again, you're going to, you will need, if you're working with wood or stone, I always recommend having that extra adhesive that you can apply to the back of your stencil to create that greater bond. Um, mini plumber's torch is always easy to have on hand so you can heat up that, that stone surface so now that your mask will adhere 
um, greater, have a greater bond um, to that stone surface. Another thing to consider if you're blasting stone and wood, go with a coarser grain or coarser um, grit of abrasive. You're going to achieve that depth a lot quicker with a coarser grain um, such as like a, a 120 abrasive that, that'll allow you to, to achieve that depth a lot quicker. Excellent, Liz. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for having us. For more videos and to check out more features, head to a-e-mag.com.